I want to share a very important philosophy with you today. It's a philosophy I think everyone should hear. Proverb 6, 8, 11. Go to the ant, you sluggard. Consider its ways and be wise. It has no commander, no overseer or ruler. Yet it stores its provisions in summer and gather its food at harvest. How long will you lie there, you sluggard? When will you get up from your sleep? A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest and poverty will come on you like a bandit and scarcity like an armed man. Here's the five philosophy that we can learn from ants. Ants have no commander. Ants don't need a commander to tell them to get started. They work faithfully and need no outside accountability to keep them doing right and doing the right things. They work hard and will replace their anthill when it gets ruined. Meaning, if you want to apply this in your real life, be proactive, be honest to yourself, and be industrious. Ants plan ahead. Ants think winter all summer long. They store provision in summer. They think the clock is running out of time and they are hurrying to get food back to their hive. Meaning, they hustle hard in advance to secure their future. Ants stay positive, always. Ants remind themselves that winter does not last long. They know they'll soon be out. Meaning, whatever happens in your life right now, it will not last forever. Ants never quit. They only change their approach. If they're going somewhere and you stop them or block their pathway, they'll look for another way up, down, all around. They keep looking till they find another way. Meaning, be learned to embrace struggle and hardship in your life. Be flexible and be like ants who don't quit. Winners are not quitters. Ants always do their best, meaning give your best in everything you do right now. It will always lead you to the greater things and the next level in your life. Thanks for Shalom. I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham, Rachah Kodash, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, whom the world ignorantly calls God, and Yahweh Shai being the name of His only begotten Son, whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and peace and mercy to the house of David, those men that are doing His work in sincerity and truth across the four corners of the earth. And much love to the 130 you believers out there, of you Israelites, you so called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Uh, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying. Um, and to you all, I say shalom and greetings. Okay, so it's just something I was that was on my spirit. You know, <clears throat> after my my recent visit out of town, and uh, you know, little to say, um, I, I learned a lot, man. I learned a lot more about myself. I learned more a lot about this walk. I learned more about uh, this faith and the men that that guide us and lead us. And ultimately, it helps us to tap into the spirit to be able to recognize uh, the power that's within within ourselves, the power that's within our mind. And also working how working as a unit can benefit uh, many things in this walk. All right. So I'm going to start with this. Uh, as you saw, he, he mentioned the scriptures. Um, but I'm just going to go back and read it over again. This is Proverbs six and six. It says, go to the ant, thou sluggard, consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer or ruler provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. How would that sleep? O sluggard, when would thou arise out of thy sleep? 
Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth and thy wants as an armed man. You know, so it says, go to the end, thou slur, consider her ways, having no God, overseer, or ruler. And see, a lot of people, when they think about, uh, oh, you know, well, the ant has a queen. It's a queen ant, you know. But, uh, you know, like queen bee and all of this kind of stuff. But I had to go back and double check, right, to uh, look up the queen ant, right? Because by technicality, there's a so-called queen ant, but not because she's a ruler. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's not because she's a ruler. It's she's called considered the queen and obviously you know babylon and the world likes to put um uh matriarchal titles you know motherly titles on uh women that are esteemed in positions of what is what looks like power but see uh she is not the queen because she has power and authority she is the queen simply because she births the ants you know so male ants will have sex with her and she creates uh, more uh, more ants. So that's that's the only reason why <clears throat> her purpose is simply to to be pregnant, to grow the colony. All right. But it says. Um, which having no God, overseer or ruler. And, you know, I thought that was powerful because. At the end of the day, in this walk, you shouldn't have to have someone constantly over you to tell you to do this, to do that, uh, uh, just always pecking at you, you know, telling, hey, that's what he said. They said they have their, they have to be accountable for themselves, you know, and it, this message was so powerful being that we're, you know, ultimately we know that quote unquote winter is coming, right? We know that hard times are coming to Babylon, right? But our minds are always focused on the kingdom, because it says they know that winter doesn't last long. You see, that's what it said about this. It says their mind all summer, their minds are focused on the winter, but their winter doesn't last long. And that's ultimately what happens with us. Actually, if I can get a precept, um, I, it was one that I wanted to get from this chapter as well. I don't think I'm going to hop right to it, but let me see. Um, Romans chapter eight, verse 18. It says, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. You see, so the things that that the Lord is going, the light things, right? The scriptures also talk about a light affliction. This is a light affliction, man, for the thing, the glory that's going to be revealed in us, man. All right, these it says that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory, man. So we might have to go out there and, and, and work, in the, work in the summertime. We might have to go out there in season, out of season, doing the work. We might have to lift things, spiritually speaking, you know, because this is an ant can lift up to 20 times its body weight, man. You see? And that's what we do spiritually because we have to lift ourselves above the state of Babylon in order to get this work done. We got to, you know, brothers got to go out to the highways and byways. We got to do lessons daily. We got to talk to brothers. We got to be charitable. We got to exhort, admonish. We got to teach. We got to edify. We have to be wise in our sayings and wise where we go and what we do, constantly being in the spirit. You know, so we're lifting our, 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 our spiritual body weight, man. You know, and it says if a human, like, I don't know the exact weight of that, that human, but if a human could lift up to 20 times the body weight, that would be like 4,000 pounds. Could you imagine lifting a 4,000 4, pound rock? You know, and but that's what the ants do. But that's what we have to do spiritually. We have to lift up. Right. And this, the word says um, in Jeremiah, make not this uh, call, not the word of the Lord a burden, you know, because this is ultimately it isn't a burden. This is an honor. All right. And just like how the ants. But you got to realize, even though it's an honor, it's for your benefit. The ants work in the colony and work for the colony because they know that that's their home. And if they don't work and winter is coming and they're not prepared that they could die. Right. And so we, as a, as the one third, as the hopeful one third, we have to do things in a collective effort. We have to do things with a collective mind. Okay. And that's why the heavenly father has taken us out of this world because the people in the world, they do things individually. 
They do things how they see fit. They think through things selfishly and for themselves. All right? You know, and niggardly also, you know, Syrac speaks about a niggard, right? And a niggard goes into being a stingy person, stingy and selfish, you know? But um, this is Romans 8 and 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love the most high, to them who are called according to his purpose. You see? So the elect, all right, this is speaking about the elect, that all the good thing, all things work together, you know? So even through the spirit, things are working. The Lord has things working together so that he can bless his elect, all right? Yeah, we got to go through a little chastisement, but that's all to better you. When You see when it says when the ants will always find a way, all right? The scripture say the elect can be plucked out of his hand. The elect will always find, a, the ants will always find a way. So the elect will always find a way. It's just like when your video gets shut down, all right? Do you just give up and say, ah, I'm, I'm never doing that video again? Nah, you try to find a way to get it uploaded. You try to find a, a different way. Like the apostles are using different streaming platforms like Odyssey and Rumble, all right? We spirit through this spiritual journey, it may not always be a straight line. That's why the scripture is talking about entering to the straight gate. That is, that is not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. All right. Meaning a, a straight line. All right. It's S-T-R-A-I-T, which means a position of difficulty. It might be rocky. It might be full of terrain. It might be hard to get around. It might be hard to get up. It might make you tired. All right. You might feel like you want to quit. You might feel like you want to turn your back. But at the end of that video, he said ants are not quitters, man. And the elect are not quitters. All right. The elect, because that's what the scriptures say. He that endureth unto the end the same shall be saved, you know? And that's what it really comes down to, man. The elect are not going to give up because the Lord has given them the spiritual energy to fight. It says he will not put anything above that we are able, you know? That's the spirit that you have to understand and that you have to be in to be able to fight through this thing to get the reward. And our reward is what? Uh, being provided for in the winter, all right? Our reward is being taken care of when, when the food's all gone because they provide, see how they, ant, the same way ants provide their food and store it up, that's our spiritual shekels. That's our work. That's our faith that we're storing up. So then when the time comes for the Lord to, uh, when, we, when we need, it's just like your bank, right? You If you have a savings account, you put your money into the bank. You put some money into the bank. You put some money into the bank, right? And by the time you put more money in the bank, so when you say, oh, you get a, uh, um, you run into some bad, some hard times, you're able to tap into that bank to receive the things that you've put in there as a, a foundation of as a sure foundation. And that's what we do with Yahweh Shai and which are which are with our with our works. So the Lord may say, okay, he was working, let me go ahead and he when he taps into this bank account, he's hungry. Let me go ahead and deliver him a miracle. Oh man, he just hurt himself. Let me go ahead and send an angel or a brother to heal him. You know? That's the times that we're coming into. This is 2 Corinthians uh 6 and 1. It says, we then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of the most high in vain. You see? So we're workers together with Yahweh Shai, man. All right? That we receive not the grace of the most high in vain because he's given us grace, liberty, and mercy. All right? So you can't be receiving it in vain, man. Just going out and taking the word of the Lord uh, and, and using it, speaking it deceitfully, doing wicked things with it. You have to understand that we've, this is a precious thing that we've been given. So we have to make wise decisions. We have to do things that are profitable, not just for you, but for the body. All right. This is Ephesians 4 and 16. It says, um, actually, I'll start at uh, 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Hamashiach from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part, make it increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. You see, so edification, effectual work in the measure of every part, make an increase of the body. That's what we do that. And we do that through Yahweh Shai. So if you saw that second clip that I put up, he said that they were, they were carrying the load. Right. Even though the scriptures say he has no overseer or no God, but they have someone to assist. OK, and we do have an overseer of God ultimately, but you don't have an overseer of God on your everyday basis. 
All right. You know, let's let's take account. Um, so let's let's go based on the decree by Apostle Tahar. The decree by Apostle Tahar is that you need to go out to camp as far as fellowship and coming together. You need to go out to camp and you, you should be having a fellowship once a week or class. Right. So let's just see that you you see brothers as a whole two times a week. That's you still have five other days where you're left to yourself. OK, so you don't have somebody to say, hey, do a lesson. Hey, pray. Hey, research. Hey, um, uh, meditate. Hey, fast. You don't have somebody lo looking over your shoulder doing that. You have the Holy Spirit has to be upon you. Right. But nonetheless, we have Yahweh Shai to assist us and guide us as a big brother. Like that. Like I said, that second clip had they were going in the wrong direction. And that's what we were doing in the world. We were going in the wrong direction. But now, even in the truth, you may be you may be able to lift the load. But you might not be quite sure which direction to go. But then the Holy Spirit and Yahweh Shai steps in. It says their leaders stepped in and they guided them. And see, how did they know that? Because they were all pulling one way. But they knew they first of all, it's either they they the the I'm gonna just say this, and this may not be completely factual on this, but it's spiritual. They uh, either they knew their leader number one, which is uh, says the the sheep know my voice. They knew that was their leader, or he was stronger than the others. So you see, because if they were all pulling in that one direction, he was strong enough to pull them in that way, and that's the spirit, and that's Yahweh Shai, his strength. Ooh, <laughs> I just thought of another one. You know, his strength was able for us to uh to be able to get ourselves together. This is 2 Corinthians 12 and um 9. It says, and he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Hamashiach may re may rest upon me. See that? He says, my strength is made perfect in weakness. So the Lord had got, when we were, we were weak going in another direction that was not towards the colony. That was not, we couldn't bring, we couldn't bring food home without Yahweh Shah, right? But through our weakness, Yahweh Shah came in and his strength is what pulled us to fight, to, to keep going, you know, to do the things that are profitable for the body. Okay. Um, so let me get, uh, I'm going to go to the book of, I'm going to go back to the book of Proverbs now. I'm going to go, it's a few scriptures I want to get on the, on the sluggard part. This is Proverbs 13 and 4. He said, it says, the soul of the sluggard desireth and has nothing, but the soul of the diligent shall be made fat. You see, so having that sluggish, that slothful, the scriptures talk about be not slothful, right? And I was looking up some of the slowest animals in the world, and they have on there, um, uh, the sloth, they have some turtles and tortoises, they have the snail, and they have the slug, and the banana slug is one of the slowest animals uh, on the earth, okay, and I even looked up, I, I'm, I'm going to get to that, I'm going to get to that, I'm getting ahead of myself, but it says, uh, but the soul of this diligent shall be made fat, you see, so a, a man who's a slugger, that's why the scripture says, if you don't work, you don't eat, right, if you don't want to labor, it's good. The scriptures say the harvest is plenteous, but the laborers are few. And why? Because majority of our people are sluggards. Even we got brothers in the truth that are sluggards dragging their feet, man. We got uh, men that came into the fold and are now cast out back in their vomit because they were sluggards in the spirit. So the Lord took their, this, his spirit from off of them, man. You know, we got to have a, a spirit of uh, fervency. We want to get that. You got to you got to want to get the hell up out of here, man. All right. You got to be want to prepare for the winter. You know, if we're all working as a collective uh, colony to get all the food. But let's say we need 19. We need 20 people, 20 ants to go and lift this large uh, vessel of food. Right. But you only only uh, 18, only 18 of them uh, show up. The other two out chilling. You know how much more weight that's going to be for the 18. Because those, when we need it, 20, you see? So it's spiritual, man. All right, do your part. This is Proverbs 20 and 4. It says, the slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. You see? So guys don't want to do the work. Guys don't want to come out. Guys don't want to uh, eat in these other camps. They only want to uh, prophesy and false prophesy in the summertime, you know? 
But if you would have, if you would have been in the ant, the, the using the wisdom of the ant and doing the work when it was warm, you wouldn't have had to work that hard in the cold. But even still, even in the cold, it says the slugger will not plow by reason of the cold. That's why the scriptures say be instant in season and out of season. So the spiritual thing is the ants stop working in the winter. We don't. <laughs> we don't, man. All right. We still got to work for Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. So because our work don't stop until Yahweh Shai takes us off them streets. And even then, brothers are going to be performing miracles, doing different works of the Lord. So we're still going to be working until Yahweh Shai come, man. That's what it all comes down to. OK, so because you don't want to beg and harvest and you don't want to have nothing, man. You want to come out of this thing being one of the Lord's hopeful elect. All right. Lord willing, we be at that number. That That's what it comes down to. And that's the spirit you need to be in, man. All right. I got uh, I got I think I got two more scriptures. This is Proverbs 26 and 16. It says the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit. I got to start up on this, actually. This is Sarak uh, 26 and verse 11. As a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. Right. And we know that, you know, you you a dog going lick up his vomit. A fool goes back into his folly, going back into the world. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. You see, you can't be wise in your own conceit, man. Thinking that your opinion is the way. Your way is the way. No, nah, I mean, the Lord says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. All right? And uh, the apostles have the doctrine, man. You know, follow in it. It says, the slothful man saith, there is a lion in the way. A lion is in the streets. You see? So that's what the slothful man say. So he'll make up something. He'll say, I'm not going to go out there because there's a lion in the streets. All right? Out of that fear. All right, man? You got to believe in the Lord. OK, you can't be slothful making making up excuses. All right. It says as the door turns upon his hinges, so a door, so a door doeth the slothful upon his bed. You see that? So as a door, most doors cannot turn without hinges. And I'm going to say no doors can turn without hinges. You have doors that can slide. Right. But even those, the ones that slide are typically a form of a hinge. Even if you have like an elevator door, it may not be a typical hinge where it opens and closes, but the mechanics are on that thing are still technically hinges. So that's how the slough will do it upon his bed. Don't want to work. Don't want to do the work. First of all, even a regular uh, making your daily bread. But how much more the work of the Lord? Right. So you, you better stop slumbering about your bed. That's why the scriptures say now is high time to awake out of sleep, man. All right. The Lord is going to return as a thief in the night and you don't want to be found on your bed. You want to be found watching. The slough will hide in his hand in his bosom. It grieveth him to bring it again to his mouth. You see, the slug, uh, he don't want to do nothing, man. All right. It, it, it grieves him just to bring his hand to his mouth, man. All right. <laughs> Slothful, man. That's work because I looked up. It says, uh, it said a slug. It's a, it's a lot of work for a slug to, to travel because I looked up how do slugs move, you know, and they're spineless as well, but they have muscular contractions. That's how they, they're able to move, but they move very slowly. It says the sluggard is wiser in his own conceit than seven men that can render a reason. You see that? That's how slugger is wiser in his own conceit. So you got seven dudes, you know, which is completion ultimately. But you have seven men that can render a reason, give you value, valid reasons why to do something. We can give you seven scriptures why you should repent. <laughs> you know, seven men can give you a scripture why you should repent. He, the dude to say, uh, the dude to say, well, you know. Uh, we'll give you seven seven scriptures about why you should stop smoking weed and committing adultery. He going to say, well, you know what? The weed keeps me uh, keeps me uh, from doing other bad things and sleeping with another man's wife keeps uh, she, that man is doing her wrong. So I'm making him happy. You see that? That's the 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 excuses. You know, it's it's talk, the scriptures talk about a fool will do according to his folly. He make an excuse according to his folly. You see? But that's what a slugger does, man. He's wise in his own conceit. Give you seven reasons. He give you all the reasons in the world why he shouldn't go out and work. Why he shouldn't do something in the spirit. Why he shouldn't get a job. All of these things, you know. But we can't be in that spirit. We got to be in the spirit of knowing Yahweh Bashim Shai. The Lord says, "Am I not coming to? Was that not coming to do my father's business, man?" All right. I looked up the word sluggard. 
It says a habitual lazy person. You know, slugs are slow as hell, man. One of the slowest creatures on the earth. And I, so now I want to get this precept. And this is the only one. It's kind of changed direction. But it says, um, I looked up. I said, man, you know, I always look up a little creatures and say, what, what is their purpose? You know, a lot of different animals have like, okay, like I hate mosquitoes, right? And I was like, what the hell is the purpose uh, mosquitoes and roaches? I'm like, what the hell is the purpose of a mosquito? Mosquitoes pollinate, right? So they're, they're like, they're basically like nighttime bees, but they, they just, they get blood from you. You know what I'm saying? And I looked up the purpose. Me and the brothers always talk about roaches. We looked up the purpose of roaches and roaches are like, um, basically trash men. You know, they're good for the environment, you know, and even though you don't want them up in your crib, but basically they're a natural trap. They, they, they take out things, you know what I'm saying? But they just are seemingly nasty creatures. You know, I don't want them around me, but nonetheless, I get their purpose intended from the Lord. But a slug's purpose, from what I could find, is that slugs are basically meat for other animals. The Lord created the slug to be eaten, <laughs> you know, for birds and, you know, things like that, th th for food. That's why the slug was created. So that made me think of the two thirds, man, because that slugger mentality is really a two third habitual lazy person habitual makes it a habit you making lazy a habit right uh um, what's the l word it's an l word um that goes into being lazy lackadaisical you know second Ezra's 9 and 22 let the multitude perish then which was born in vain and let my grape be kept in my plant for with great labor have i made it perfect right and that grape is talking about the elect of yahweh by shimei Shai. It's going to be going to be kept. Right. It's, it says for with great labor. Have I made it perfect? So even with making the elect was great labor taken in at much work done. So the Lord wasn't even sluggish in making the elect. Right. But it says, let the multitude perish then, which is born in vain. So just like the slug by technicality. Right. It was made with the purpose, but its purpose was to be eaten. So in a way it was made in vain. Right. But the two thirds have their purpose. But they're made in vain, meaning that they don't have a purpose of serving the Lord on this side. Right. They're going to be reborn into the kingdom to serve that purpose. But right now they are serving the purpose of judgment. They are serving the purpose of uh, showing the Lord's glory of, of how he's going to destroy them for their disobedience. Right. So the same as the sluggard, the slug, man. You know, and I just wanted to make that um, comparison. But hey, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all the praise, honor and glory to you. How about you? Hey. And like second, I believe Second Timothy two and three says, endure uh, uh, as a good soldier, man. Be strong and endure as a good soldier, and that's what we're supposed to do with this spirit, with this testimony, and with this word, man. You know, don't be slug, don't be sluggard, and go to the end and make wise decisions, and let's let's store up this thing so that we can get the hell up out of here. Let's store this food up. So, hey, Lord, when this lesson was edifying, I want to give all the praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rechakadash. Double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. And peace and mercy to the house of David, the elect. Until next time, Shalom.